Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Rack and Power Management. Today I'm going to talk about Rack Management, and then I'm going to conclude with a brief segment on Power Management. With that, let's go ahead and begin today's session. I'm going to begin by talking about Rack Management. Rack systems are specially designed racks used to hold networking and computing equipment. Sometimes they are referred to as server racks. These rack systems follow one of several different designs. However, they all follow the same height specification. That specification is the standard unit and it's designated by the capital letter U. Now the standard unit involves the amount of vertical space that can be used to hold equipment. A standard unit is equal to 1.75 inches. So a 15U rack has 26 and a quarter inches of vertical storage space. Most rack servers and enterprise level networking equipment are designed to fit within rack systems. There are several different types of racks. Racks are normally either two post or four post racks. They may be freestanding or they may be floor mounted. Server rail racks have slide mounts to make it easy to pull out servers to perform necessary maintenance. Now let's talk about device placement. Devices that generate the most amount of heat or are not heat sensitive should be placed towards the top of the rack. Devices that generate the least amount of heat or are heat sensitive should be placed toward the bottom of the rack. All equipment cold air intakes should face the same direction. All equipment exhaust outlets should therefore also face the same direction. When mounting equipment in racks, vertical space should be left between the equipment to promote adequate airflow. When multiple rows of racks are implemented, a hot aisle cold aisle approach should be used to promote proper airflow and cooling. Racks should be monitored for environmental factors to help ensure the health of the servers and other equipment. Monitors should be in place for temperature, humidity, vibration, water leaks, smoke, and intrusion. And that brings us to rack security. Most rack systems do not come with rack security in mind, but it can be easily added after rack installation. Rack doors can be added that have either keyed or electronic locks. If the equipment is not secured, it can be easily stolen. Now let's have a brief discussion on power management. So before I begin talking about power management, let me give you a little bit of trivia. We're all familiar with the power symbol that you see there to the right. That's actually a binary symbol. What that is, is a zero with a one poking through it. I know, not very relevant to today's discussion, but it's an interesting bit of trivia. Now, power is often overlooked when designing a network. However, without power management, the network may never work properly. Most people assume that when they plug a piece of equipment into a wall socket, that that piece of equipment is going to power up just fine. In most cases, they are correct. However, if the circuit cannot provide enough amps to the equipment, damage may occur. It is important to know the power requirements and loads for all of the equipment that will be in place. This helps to ensure that the proper electrical circuits are installed so that sufficient power is delivered where it is needed, when it is needed. Power converters convert electrical energy from one form to another, as in from AC to DC, or from one voltage level to another. On the other hand, power inverters are a type of power converter that specifically converts voltages from DC to AC. Then we have the uninterruptible power supply, the UPS. It uses power converters to receive electrical current from an AC electrical source and it passes that current to a battery or set of batteries for storage. 
it then uses a power inverter to receive DC current from the batteries and pass it to another device as a conditioned and well-regulated AC flow. They're used to provide a steady stream of conditioned electrical power to components. They help to protect sensitive electrical components from power anomalies, either from power spikes, power outs, or from power sags. In some cases, you may want to consider installing power redundancies. Critical components should include redundant power supplies. That means that if one power supply fails, the other one takes over immediately without any loss of service. Now that concludes this session on rack and power management. I began by talking briefly about rack management, and then I concluded with a brief discussion on power management. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope you watch another one soon.